as you know, there was this tremendous rise in the number of hormones. I'm, I'm particularly working with hormones from the gut, of course. And um, that, has, that discovery curve has flattened out and it's almost completely flat now. Uh, and also, when I started in this field, we didn't know what was in all these endocrine cells in the gut. And now we know at least some of the components that are in all of the cells. So there are no uh, uh, silent cells, hidden mysterious cells that we need to look at. But I'm sure there are more, uh, and there are more hormonal peptides also. And I can just mention something like FGF21 and FGF19 that are hormone-like things that may have a great impact in metabolism. And I'm sure that we will hear a lot about those, those in the future. First of all, I, I think I'm obliged to say here that uh, we should always remember to do lifestyle modifications. And this in particular has to do with physical activity. Because if you sit there in the couch all day and never move, you're a lost case. I mean, it can't, it can't be helped and it shouldn't be helped with a pill because you ruin your tissues, you ruin your muscles and you destroy your metabolism in general. So you, you, you have to get up, you have to get up. Just a walk is enough. So, but will a pill be able to help? And that's perhaps the most important. Um, so weight loss is fantastic and important for, particularly for diabetes therapy. Um, I, there's a colleague here, Roy Taylor, he thinks that uh, diabetes should be treated by perhaps not eating at all, <laughs> almost. He looks like it himself. But, um, but uh, so it, uh, losing weight is essential. And so the question is, how do you do it? And uh, as everybody knows, it's extremely difficult. Uh, but there is a fair chance that we can actually come up with a pill that can help. There have been several pills. Uh, today, the focus is not as much on energy expenditure, which it was in the uh, previous periods. Uh, it's on appetite regulation, the regulation of food intake and appetite. And I think that is a, a very important change. Uh, and there, uh, what we have been working with, what I have been working with for a long time now, is the hormones from the gut that appear to regulate exactly uh, appetite. And uh, so right now, um, they have been transformed into injectables. And um, there are injectable therapies that will have an important activity on appetite. One of them, the hormone GLP-1, is now also being developed as an oral GLP-1. And it works. There are several reports here at the Congress on this oral semaglutide uh, preparation. And that has a very powerful effect on also appetite and food intake. It is also a very good therapy for type 2 diabetes. But um, that is important also because not only will a weight loss be important for prevention of diabetes, but if you put a DLP-1 agonist on top, you're almost on the completely certain side that you will not develop. It's preventive. It's been demonstrated in large studies that this actually works. So one pill is almost on its way and what we are working on trying to do is to see if we can find out how we regulate the secretion of these hormones from the gut because we think it would be even smarter to give people something, a pill, that could increase the secretion of these hormones selectively and then create this inhibition of appetite and, and food intake that we see, for instance, after something like bariatric surgery, where the weight loss is precisely because of those hormones that regulate appetite. So it's a, an inhibition of appetite and a reduction of food intake that is the consequence of this, and that is because of these hormones. So I think there's a huge potential in that, and uh, this is what we're working on there. there are, they're still mostly in the injectable state, but um, as I said, there is one on its way, uh, an oral. So it's going to be very complicated to predict the future about these things because there are still, as we already discussed, a number of things to discover here. Uh, personally, again, I think that um, this uh, in increasing focus on appetite regulation is very, very important. And I, I really, I honestly do concur with my, my friend Roy Taylor that uh, 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 losing weight is one of the most essential uh, features of diabetes therapy. So it is that focus and uh, the, the knowledge and, and the idea that you have to do something about your metabolism 
as we said, with the physical exercise, you can't really lose weight with physical exercise. It's too difficult. But, but, but if you at the same time make sure to lose a little bit of weight by dieting and help, being helped by these appetite regulation, uh, regulating hormones, then, then you may. So I think this is a, a revolution, really. And it is possible. It will work. Um, you just have to find out exactly how to do it. Yeah, that, that of course is uh, I think one of the big, big societal questions these days with this very large uh, epidemic of obesity. And we've already discussed how important it is in terms of preventing also diabetes to, to do something about it. Unfortunately, some of the solutions that I have been talking about already are expensive. So on a global basis, it doesn't look good. Um, also, I've mentioned surgery which is also something that can only be offered for very few. Um, it is really a societal obligation to do something about this. I come from a country which is fortunately very flat, and that means that people are able to ride a bicycle, and we do that in our country. Um, so last spring, um, there were more people going to work in Copenhagen on a bicycle than in a car, and that was the first I mean, that was the first from, for, and so, in fact, I think that, that legislators have to consider this. They really have to do something about the environment uh, to make it easier for people to w not work hard, but simply to move rather than not move. Uh, if you don't move at all, you're in trouble. Uh, and at the same time, with all this food around, I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and it's, not, it's, not, it's not strange, it's not difficult to understand that these things go wrong. So it's really a societal uh, uh, obligation to do something about this. And um, the solution in my mind is to make sure that people have a chance to move every day. As usual, there's a lot of good science here. At, and, and, and the best science is what you find at the posters, of course. Uh, that's where all the new things are reported, whereas uh, in the big halls you very often hear what we already uh, had heard about. But um, there are many uh, new and, and important uh, findings. Uh, I'm particularly fascinated about the use of the SGLT2 inhibitors, which uh, uh, have now uh, turned into a huge success. Uh, and uh, I will also emphasize uh, some of the other therapies that are being uh, in, introduced here at, at the Congress. Uh, at, at the, it's really unbelievable, so many therapies we have today for type 2 diabetes. So now it's a problem that, that people have to choose among all these possibilities. And we have to learn how to use each of these different medications. Um, just a few years ago, we only had very few uh, possibilities. And that has changed completely. So, and that's what we really see at this conference. Uh, every hall uh, describes a, a set of therapies, new therapies, and demonstrate that they're extremely uh, important also for survival for cardiovascular, not only safety, but also improvement of cardiovascular risk. So it's getting, it's getting, more, it's getting more fun and more rewarding to treat these diseases because there is something, there is a, there is a future here. Uh, so I think that's the most uh, interesting we are, we are watching here at the ESD.